Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. So, welcome back to the kitchen. It's been a hot minute uh, since y'all been in the kitchen with me. And I just wanted to show y'all what all got going on today. So, we're going to process our broilers here. Today is Wednesday. We're going to process them on Friday, which it won't be that day of the week when you see this. But, I had to get the extras out of the freezer, which luckily we didn't have a ton of extras because... We run very few meat chickens this year just due to life in general, things going on. So, wanted to get these out and get these canned. Um, canned meat freaks a lot of people out. But you buy canned meat at the store, why can't you can your own? Okay, as long as you do it right, it ain't nothing to be scared of. And it is so convenient. Make your own convenience foods. So, that's what I'm doing today. Now, I'm going to show you what i got going on. This chicken here has been boiling three-ish hours, three or four hours. And so I want to boil it until it is absolutely just falling apart, which you can see here. It, it is. They're falling apart. Some people can raw chicken. That is totally fine, but I like to do it this way. I like to boil the chicken first because then I also get the chicken broth. So I'll be canning the chicken and the chicken broth. Um, so I don't have to buy any chicken broth, okay, guys? Because um, our kind of rule of thumb around here, besides a few snack foods, is if we don't have it from our farm here, then we just don't have it, okay? So got to get this out and let it get cooled. I'm also going to be canning some apples today. I'm going to show you an easy way to do that. Um, and I need to put some peppers in the dehydrator. Hopefully, I'll get to that, too. So let's get going. Cut these off. I gotta get these chickens out. They are absolutely falling apart. That's gonna make my life a whole lot easier, though. So you can see here, got a pile of chicken. So all that's got to cool enough that I can handle it. Then I'll show you what to do from there. While we're waiting, we're gonna go ahead and get these apples canned. So with the apples, the way I do them, it's a two day process. So last night, Andy and I peeled the apples um, with my little apple peeler thing. Y'all seen those. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link it in the description because I don't know how to tell you what it looks like, but you spin it and it cuts the apple and peels it and all that jazz. But anyways, you put a layer of apples on the bottom of your pot, sprinkle a little sugar on them, another layer of apples, sprinkle sugar, so on and so forth, till you fill your pot up. So then you let them sit overnight. So that's the point we're at right now. I just got them out of the fridge. That sugar helps them from turning brown. I didn't put any citric acid or anything like that on them. Um, which if you do, I mean, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. It keeps them from changing colors to bad. But we're gonna get these in the jar and get these canned. Today's video is brought to you by Four Jars uh, Cannon Lids. So I'm just going to tell y'all a real quick story. Last year at Homesteaders of America, which we didn't get to go this year. I was pretty sad about it. But anyways, um, I've got some of the Four Jars Lids to try. They let me have some just to try because I told them I did a lot of canning and so on and so forth. Y'all, 
these lids have got the competition beat all to pieces. I actually reached back out to Four Jars, let them know about the YouTube channel and everything else and said, you know, I really feel like this will bring value to my watchers and my subscribers. And uh, they sent me some more to feature on my videos. Now y'all know that I am not gonna put something on these videos that I don't truly believe in or know that it truly works. Um, but my seal failure on these is almost nothing. And they are much thicker than um, the popular brand lids. I, Cause I have noticed they have been getting thinner over the years. You can get them in bulk. Like this right here is 50 regular lids. Uh, but you don't have to get them in bulk, but you can. And I'm actually, they uh, give me a 10% discount for all y'all. So be Appalachian 10, what you would type in uh, to get a 10% off. And also I'm going to leave a link in the description and in the comments. Um, so y'all go through that link. Uh, it helps me out a little bit. And if you want to try the four jars lids, but you can just tell they're awesome lids, y'all. And like I said, I wouldn't be telling y'all that if I didn't truly believe it. But they have uh, done me well this summer. And last year, I used them after Home Setters of America when I got them to can a lot of my pork. And uh, killer. Done done awesome. All right. Got my, my rims wiped off. No heat on my pressure canner yet because cold jars going to cold canner. So I'm going to get my lids on here. Now with the apples, you only fill them up maybe a hair over halfway and put, I pour whatever juice is in my pot in there, try to split it between all of them. It's usually not a ton. And then I go about halfway with water. bring these apples up to right at five pounds of pressure <clears throat> no time we're gonna cut it off okay um, I had a very dear friend of mine tell me how to do this and it has worked really well because um, with the water bath cannon for whatever reason I have not had good luck with water bath and apples and they actually keep don't know why probably something user error but uh, this has worked well while that's while the apples are going I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling some of this chicken off the bone um, it's starting to cool a little bit. I'm going to put it in my bowl here. Any bones or anything, I'm going to put back in my chicken broth and let that continue to cook. The longer you let it cook, the better broth you get, so... decent sized bowls of shredded chicken. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling up my jars, waiting on this to come up to pressure with my apples so I can cut it off, uh, which it sounds like it's working on it. So I'm gonna get these in the jar. Now, what I'll do first, now I know the chicken looks a little dry, but uh, once you put that broth, once I scoop some broth in here, oh, it's gonna be, it'll be great, it'll be great. It makes such an easy meal. So I just go ahead and fill this up till, till about right there, that first ring. I'm gonna get my chicken in first. Typically I like to do meat in the wide mouth jars. The chicken don't matter as much but when I'm doing my pork ribs or something like that, it uh, the wide mouth is a must because it's easier to get out. But a lot of work up front, you know, uh, be most of my day today working on this, but 
like I said in the beginning of the video, make your own convenience food because I will be thankful that I spent this day canning chicken come winter time and I want a quick pot of soup or something like that. Chicken and dumplings, um, make a, our old family recipe. Well, it's Andy's old family recipe. Uh, his great grandma's or his great great grandma's, I believe. If you hadn't seen that video, be sure to check that out. I believe I made that sometime last year. And I'll link that up in the top here, too. But this will be perfect. Also, Maggie loves chicken. So, sometimes on nights that I don't have something she likes, it's so easy just to go pop open a jar of chicken um, for her to eat some of it. I don't know how many jars we'll get here because it was seven chickens, but some were bigger, some were smaller, so. So now I've got my chicken all in the jars. Hello! <laughs> and uh, me and Maggie are working on school right over here too. But I'm gonna take my broth that I've had over here cooking and put it in and fill my chicken up till about the first ring there, or at least until the chicken is covered. Now, I've already put salt in the broth, um, so I'm not putting any salt in the chicken. So, I do this little filter here, just see if there's a peppercorn and a few little pieces of chicken in there, just to catch, so I make sure I don't put any bones accidentally or anything like that. All right, Maggie, what's one less of 15? Maggie, one less from 15 would be what? 14. 14, that's right. I know 16. Yep, one more would be 16, that's right. Now it's looking like I'm gonna have about 10 quarts of chicken, so what I'll do um, is I'll run another pressure canner in a little bit and I'll show y'all that and I'll do my chicken and my broth at the same time. So my apples are done, the pressure released, and I just took the weight off and let it sit here for a minute after the pressure released. Get out of the way. So I'm gonna put them on my canning mat. This thing has been well used. I made several last year. If you're interested in a canning mat, I do still have one left in my Etsy store. It's kind of a Western theme. I hope to make a few more to put out in case anybody wants to give them as Christmas gifts. Um, have some folks say why to use a mat instead of a towel, but I mean, I just thought it was a cute idea and I just kind of come up with it. I don't know. So anyways, <laughs> let's get our apples out. All right. The apples smell delicious. I found another one of these there. Oh, looks like they can eat it. They do. Smells like Apples do have quite a bit of air in them, so this rising to the top is to be expected. These will be great for uh, apple pies, baked apples, apple cobblers, things like that. It'll be uh, perfect. Again, another convenience that keeps me from having to cook the apples. They're already cooked. So now, I'm going to go straight in the canner with my chicken. This was hot chicken broth that I put in the chickens, so I can go straight in the hot canner with these hot, because the jars are already hot. If they were cold, I would not do that. Okay, you done done all of them? Mm -hmm. All right, let me get these started. Okay. And I'll be right back over there. See how good that looks there. Get my ball blue book of preserving out. This is like, y'all can tell this thing is like well used. 
if you're looking to get into canning or you already know how to can and don't have this book, I would still absolutely recommend it. So we're gonna find chicken in here cause I can't keep all this stuff in my brain. <laughs> how to can all this so, or the times and all that. So we're gonna can this chicken under 10 pounds of pressure. Um, for quarts, it's an hour and a half. Whether it's cooked chicken or raw chicken, you would do exactly that. So an hour and a half, so get that cranked up there. We'll let it vent for about 10 minutes and then I'll stick the weight on there. Show y'all up close of this right here. This is why I like boiling the chicken. Look at this beautiful chicken broth I've got here. And there's the chicken in the broth. This is my next set. I ended up having 10 quarts. Um, so this is fixing to go in the canner. I'm just gonna can the broth with the chicken. Broth usually doesn't have to can for an hour and a half, but it ain't gonna hurt nothing. All right, I got two canners that we're going. This just kind of makes the process a little quicker. I've moved my apples over here now that cooled. This is the broth and chicken both together, and this is just the first batch of chicken you saw me put in. So my little indicator is down. I'm gonna take the weight off. And we're gonna go ahead and see what this looks like, guys. See that guys? Absolutely delicious. There's seven easy meals right there for us uh, throughout the year that I don't have to worry about thawing something out or anything like that. And it's got that delicious golden chicken broth because I boiled the chicken first uh, in there with that chicken. I'm only getting to my peppers. So what I'm planning on doing with these, actually a viewer gave me this idea on the live the other night. I'm going to cut these into rings and stick them in the dehydrator to use, um, to rehydrate and use in different things. Now, I did this a year or two ago. I, um, dried peppers and made me like a pepper powder, which actually I still have some, um, because that went a long ways. That was delicious for seasoning stuff. But I'm going to leave these in the rings. We're just going to try it and... Get these dried out. They should store well. And uh, just add them to different dishes and see how it goes. I've already frozen a ton of chopped peppers. Um, and it's a good year's worth. And freezer space around here is very precious. Hence why I was getting the chickens out too. But... Uh, you know, I took up all the freezer space that I want to take up as far as peppers go. Like I said, somebody give me this idea right here. So I thought, why not? I got plenty of peppers. My peppers are coming in hot. And no pun intended. <laughs> I just thought about that. This is why I boil the chicken instead of doing it raw. Because the chicken, when you can it raw, will still make chicken broth inside the jar with the chicken. But I love having extra on hand because it has so many uses and makes uh, things so, so delicious, especially 
homemade chicken broth. Once you make your own broth, you can't go back to the store bought stuff. It tastes like water. Uh, this just takes this a total flavor enhancer, um, and it's very good for you too. So, anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. It has been a very long day. Don't know how long this video will be, but it has been a long day of preserving, and we will be very thankful for this come, especially winter time. Um, so. Hope this video helped you a little bit. Hope it taught you a little something. Um, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, be sure to share this with somebody you know that may also enjoy this kind of stuff. And uh, anyways, guys, if you're uh, interested in more Canon videos, I'll leave y'all a playlist uh, to check that out. I have a ton floating around YouTube. Just hadn't had a chance to make a video in the kitchen much this season. Anyways, guys, appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good one.